It's now time for Ermani and Edwards with Maz, live on the Woodward Sports Network. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m. Starring Ryan like you don't know. Ermani, Michigan great and former NFL baller Braylon Edwards, and of course, Tom Mazaway. Let's talk some sports. Hey, let's go Monday show, March 25th, 2024. Armani and Edwards with Mass Woodward Sports Network, woodwardsports.com, fox2detroit.com, or the Fox Local app if you are watching live. If you're watching on YouTube, part of the over 63,000 subscribers on that platform, we say hello to you. And Braylon Edwards. Good afternoon to you, my friend. What's up, my friend? You, Mads, baby. Mike's so good to Pete. see you, man. Good to see you guys again. Man. Uh, Friday, couldn't be with you guys because of this preliminary hearing for the YMCA deal. I didn't know it was going to be this intense. I'm thinking, you know, I'm just going to go in there and you know, walk in the courtroom, talk to the judge, say what I saw, boom, boom, and then the preliminary is over. They have me on the record. Can I just stop you for a minute? For people that don't know, Braylon Edwards. So, sorry. Saved somebody's life. He's out of the hospital, by the way. He is out of the hospital. hospital. That's fantastic. Braylon Edwards uh, saved somebody's life inside the locker room at the YMCA. An older gentleman was getting beaten up by a younger guy, and um, Braylon stepped in. So Friday was the day you had to go testify. 100%. I couldn't have said it better myself, Ryan and Mike. Thanks for setting me up. There you go. Uh, But yeah, so I go in the courtroom expecting it to be light situation, get on the record and get out of there. Man, his whole family was there. Mm. Him, I'm talking about Mr. Smith, the defendant, the guy that was harassing or assaulting the older guy. And he had about 18, 20 family members in there. Not so many people on the other side. I think they'll probably wait for trial, if you will. But it was intense, man. It felt like a real court scene out of a movie. Walked in, mm. eyeing me, looking at me like with these menacing eyes. I'm looking back like I said, I saw what I saw. You know what I'm saying? So I get on the courtroom, get on the stand. I do the whole nine yards. And so then I get hit from the prosecution, pause, they ask me about what I saw on my account. And then a defense attorney gets up, old kind of greasy guy, like he might like drink late into the, into the nights to become Oof. the mornings, just like the movies. Like just some, he probably doesn't make a lot of money, whatever. It's anyway, better call Saul. 100%, that's what somebody <laughs> told me. So he starts asking these questions, he's trying to trip me up. And I just kept remembering to say it. I didn't see any of the actual hits. Any of the actual assaults? I said, yes, that is correct. I did not say, yes, that is correct. He said, but, you know, so it was it was interesting. But then he asked me one last question. At the end, he said, did you tell anything to the defendant? And I said, yeah, I told him he need to get the F out of here. He said, why did you tell him that? I was like, because the situation was messed up. And he needs to skedaddle. And when I said that, I could see the family kind of like, well, it ain't his fault. They kind of like the, the shift happened with the family where they were like, I mean, look, he did what he did. And he Luckily, I may have helped him uh, get a lighter, lighter sentence because now since the guy's out of hospital, I think it's attempted uh, manslaughter, second-degree manslaughter, which wow. holds a sentence of 12 years, which means maybe he gets three and gets out in 18 months if he's on good behavior. So hopefully that's the case. Tom Mazaway, Court good TV, afternoon baby. to you, my friend. I would have loved to have seen man. that. Oh, but that's the preliminary. Yeah. So you can come for the trial. Oh, man, I might sit in there and support you. We both play hooky. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you good luck on this, man. I appreciate and it. I, I just hope everything works out. I hope the kid gets his life together and becomes better. It looks like he has family support, yeah, which is nice. A, that was a, the shocking That's thing. That's a nice thing. Yeah. So maybe this kid will learn, and thank God he didn't finish the job that he yeah. started. And I hope the, the gentleman that you saved gets better. So yeah. let's just hope everything works out. But this past weekend has been great for sports, guys. Except for the poor Red Wings who lost a heartbreaker to Nashville, won nothing on Saturday. Best team in hockey right now, hottest team uh, Nashville is. But the Ma- March Madness was fantastic. The run that Oakland had, I know it's one win. It should have been two. Uh, it was phenomenal. NC State's great, too. Great run that they've had. I mean, they've had the win out as well. It's been terrific. I love this time. Like I said, I don't watch college basketball all year, but I am sure locked in always. When this tournament starts, it's the best. To me, it's the best week of sports, the best couple of weeks of sports. I think when you talk about the run that Oakland University had (laughs) as well, you you do back it up to To the the conference conference championship, right? I mean, because you do. And the season. I think they did have to win three games in their conference tournament. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Ultimately. They were a top seed. Absolutely. They played. They dominated that division this year. Absolutely. And as Greg Campy says, they had their moment cutting down the nets and the confetti flying in the conference yep. tournament. They had their moment. Everything 
after that bonus. was gravy. Yeah. And I think, you know, the way they played on Thursday night against Kentucky opened up the eyes of college basketball to the fact that Oakland is in Michigan mm. and they have a pretty good coach over there and a pretty good basketball system over there. They won the game and I think they were the talk of college basketball for 48 hours. And everybody was talking about Oakland, wanted a piece of Jack Golke, wanted to know who this Greg Campy was who's been at this one institution for 40 years. It was fantastic, yeah. and and I hated to see it end, yeah. especially the way it did. As we were talking to Neil Rule earlier, and you said as soon as it went to overtime, you knew it was over. And I, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to say that. I didn't go that far, but you yeah. did feel like they had their chance. I said it. Um, is it just me or does it seem like the higher C always wins in overtime? Like in the final four, the higher seeds always. You just get worn down, mm -hmm. man. I mean, you have yeah. your chance. They True. have their shot. I mm -hmm. think that experience and the reason why somebody is a higher seed comes into play into overtime. Because they NC, always yeah, higher NC seed State's got the better athletes. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. Speaking and they of, had to fight yeah. their way. They were an 11th seed. They're, they're the highest seed They won left. five games in five yes. days in the ACC tournament. Otherwise, yeah. they're in the NIT. Absolutely. 100%. Speaking of NIT, uh, Michigan State loses in, in – for the first in the first what is it the first week yet again yep. early exit first ten minutes like Ryan says they look like world beaters mm -hmm. and then they, they I just, posted they that it. video did you see did you yeah. see over the weekend yeah I posted the video from what I said on Saturday yep I said um, when it comes to Michigan State they could beat anybody in the country but they go so long four or five minute stretches without scoring a yeah. point and it's over that you against cannot a take them seriously yeah. because. In the first round against, uh, who did they play in the first round again in the nine seed Mississippi State? Mississippi yeah. State. They went twice where they didn't score over a four minute period. And then you're like, how are you going to win? How are you going to play UNC? You can do that against Mississippi yeah. State. You can't do that one time against a good team. You certainly mm -hmm. can't do it against a top seed. Yeah. And at the end of the first half, they had a they had a 12 point lead in the first half. They went upwards of five minutes without scoring, and before you knew it, instead of being up 12, Michigan State was down nine. Yep. Yeah. It was almost incredible. They like, you wouldn't believe it if somebody told you that. They fumbled the last time they had the ball in the first half even. Mm. They couldn't get a shot off. Crazy, man. It's, it, it's crazy. When Michigan State plays UNC in the tournament, it just always seems like a blowout. It reminded me of yeah. 2009. UNC owns them in, in, the, All uh, in over the tournament. Again. Is Izzo done? No. 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 He if says any, he's not. In fact... He Should pulled, he be done? Do we have that? Yeah. Here's Tom Izzo after the game. I'm getting back to a deeper run in this tournament. I'm going to die trying. There's your Jim Harbaugh moment, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yep. When asked if he could ever beat yeah. Ohio State, what did he say? I, I, I'm going to die I, trying. I'm going to die, die trying. trying. Yep. There's your Tom Izzo, Jim Bam. Harbaugh moment. Bam. And I do believe he will. I do get back. I, I do. do believe after this four. This is like the worst four-year stretch yeah. in the history of the program under Tom Izzo. Correct. Um, I think he is going to change the way he does things. I and look, let me play this Jay Billis for you too while I'm at it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, got, my, I got my hand raised because not be, Jay Billis. Be, uh, Jay, uh, Wright, Jay Wright. Jay Wright from Villanova. What who's we now, talked about. Who's now an analyst. This is exactly what I talked about. This is exactly what we talked about the other day. It is the way college basketball is going. Not only is Tom Izzo going to change the way he do does things, John Calipari should as well. He should be fired. Well, we'll t I'll talk about that. He but here's Jay blasphemy. Wright talking about college basketball and the one and dones. The era of taking these young freshmen and trying to play against older players is over. Like it, he did a, I think he did a phenomenal job with these guys all year, getting them to be as successful as they were. You can see they're playing against grown men. The guys on Kentucky will be far better pros than any of these guys on Oakland or any of these guys in the tournament. But they're not as good college basketball players. It's a, at this point in their career, they're not as disciplined yet as the guys from Oakland. And it's not Cal's fault. It's they're 18 years old. And they're in this era where everyone's telling them how great they are. Just show up in college and you're going to win. It doesn't happen that way. And the more the guys stay in college because of NIL, it's going to be tougher for young teams like this to be successful. Golke, 24 years old. So, so Wright was talking about John Calipari in Kentucky's case. But Braylon, if you want to pick them apart just uh, individually, 
Izzo has to change. Kentucky has to change. College, the way you win in college basketball today, hell, look at Oakland, playing with a 24-year-old transfer that can doesn't shoot twos. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? The way you have to win it has changed. It does, but with Tom Izzo, I'm going back to Tom sure, Izzo. Tom Izzo do. will never get back to where he once was because now – He's getting worse and he's regressing each season. You talk about the guys that are better, like Oakland beating uh, Kentucky. It's because they got older guys on the team. The guys have been together longer, just like how St. Pete's beat Purdue. Correct. Well, then what's Tom Izzo's excuse? His whole team is juniors and seniors that have been there. Hogarth's a fifth year for crying out loud. Like, what is the excuse? They do stay. What exactly? So, what is the excuse for him? He's just not getting it done. He's not winning, and each year it looks worse and worse and worse. Jim Harbaugh was able to change up there at Michigan, Ryan and Mike. Jim Harbaugh is also not 70. Mm. Tom Izzo is, is closing in on 70. Like, he's stuck in his ways. You show me a man that changes his late in life, it, don't worry, I'll wait for it. So I just think it's so hard, especially when you've had success. Like, he won a national championship coach in that way, and he's been trying to 24 coach. 24 years ago. But he's been trying to coach that same exact way, <laughs> looking for that one shiny moment like he had back in 2000. And I just think the time has passed. And yeah, it's hard to coach these kids because either you're going to have the John Calipari where you got the kids that are going to be the best players in the NBA, but right now they're not cohesive and they yeah. don't understand how to play team ball. Or you're going to have the guys that he clearly has, the three stars that are four-year players or five-year players, and they're, they're max ceiling. Is the beginning of the I mean the NCAA tournament. I don't see it changing. You know the thing about it too, Mads, is you don't have one guy on that team that, in the midst of a four or five minute can stretch, get you a bucket that can absolutely drive mm-hmm. to the basket and get fouled and, heaven forbid, just make a shot. Tom's scared of those kids because those are the kids that leave. They is has always been. That's why he has the three year program and the four year program. He, only two people ever got out: Jason Richardson and Zach Randolph. Everybody else was held captive for three <laughs> – it's for, for real. For three to four years, like, that's been his thing. He doesn't like those guys that are Kentucky guys or are Duke guys at UNC because you know what? They're coming to college just to go to the NBA. They're only wasting a year because they have to. He don't want those guys. Listen, in this transfer era, he can go out and get some guys. NIL. True. Michigan State's got money to spend. They got great donors. They have got – They have. they're ready – He's, he's not going to get hoodwinked again. He's going to bring in some players okay. that he's going to put on this team, and they're going to make another run. I still believe in him. Yeah. I like the way he coaches. I know I'm an old-school guy. He mentioned later on in that, in that speech that we had, he mentioned, hey, Nick Saban did it, 73, blah, 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 blah. I can do it. I still can do it. And if they don't want me here, uh, then – they don't need fire me. Here. me. Fire I'll, me. I'll go win somewhere else. He's, I'll go win somewhere and else. I, I do believe in Tom Izzo is going to get this too. right. I, okay. I really do. Um, I'm with him. Yeah. He said fire me. talking about Nick Saban. He confirmed. He said Nick Saban did it. What else did Nick Saban do? He just resigned. I know. Because of the way college football But three is. years later. This is true, but it's Alabama. Like Michigan State, it's hard to compare Michigan State to Alabama because Alabama, is, their, their closet is loaded. Year after year after year after year, we're Michigan State. You know, you might have a good year, down year, two good years. So, but it's just tough. Like I, unless he pulls the trigger like Nick Nolte did in Blue Chips. Yeah. Unless he pulls that type of trigger right. where he's going after the but five stars. But it's legal now. Well, well, I'm saying yeah. going after the five stars and it's legal now. Hey, look, we come up here. We got you this NI deal. With, we got a deal with Domino's Pizza. We got this deal with GMC. We we can get you paid. Mm-hmm. He might have to go that route. And if he's willing to change, look, it I like. Sounds time. like he's gonna. Yeah, I know I like time. So I'm all, I'm hoping he gets it right. I just don't think so. But people can't change, I guess. Well, it's not only about that too. The, the, like it does feel like um, you know we know Tom Izzo to be Tom Izzo. Yeah. But these kids growing up today that are. 16, 17 years John old. John Calipari. What, 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 Duke. What does is, what is a 16 or 17-year-old kid know about, you know, Michigan State's basketball program? How many right. national championships have they won? One. One. 24 when? years ago. 24 years They ago. weren't even born yet. No. Right. You know, they don't know who Mateen Cleaves is. They don't know Jason Richardson. Is that random? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, they know Draymond Green, but yeah. did Draymond Green win a national cha- championship? I mean, that's probably the only player they really know. They've been to quite a number of Final Fours, though. 
Quite a number. They just can't finish it. Yeah, but like years ago, to Ryan's point, in terms of like recruiting these kids, that's and that's another reason. You know, you can't get those kids because they're like same questions he's asking. Whereas Duke, you still recognize that noon. I mean, that name. Duke yeah. will always be a name. Kentucky, John Calipari, right. UNC. One, two, UNC three, is a four, name. five, it's a blue five blood. Kansas. six, seven. Kansas is a name. Did you see what Bill Self said? UCLA. Ten, what did Bill say? We mentioned Kansas 12, had a horrible year this year. Yeah. Matter of fact, they lost their last two games before the tournament by popped. 50 points. They asked Bill Self, uh, about next year, when do, you, when do you start thinking about next year? He's like, I've been thinking about next year since midseason. He knew he did not have the right team mm -hmm. in Kansas. He knew it. He brought Hunter Dickinson in. That didn't work. They almost lost. They, they, they should have lost. lost. They to, and that's, that, that, that call was I, horrible. I knew they, they were going to get blown out by, by Gonzaga. I told my wife, this is going to be the easiest win yeah. of the tournament, and it was. But Bill Self even recognizes that he's got to change going forward. Yeah, and they were in the finals a couple of years ago. So they if my, if I yeah. if I've got my math right, two Final Fours for Izzo in Michigan State in the last <laughs> fourteen right, years. Okay, they and they haven't won a game in the Final Four. My que like not in that right. um, time span. As I go back to the last fourteen years, you got it. Does it even? Is is just making it to the Final Four? Is that like that's pretty good? Is that no, no. like? Yeah, I think that's good now if that's you're damn like good. George Mason or FAU or San Diego State. I mean, I don't know. Michigan made it to two national, like yeah. the championship game yeah. twice in the last decade. And, and again, like, no I, love for I, what, it. What is, what is that? What did that do for them? They didn't win. So, yeah. you know, two, two national championship games in the last decade, two final four, I, you know, I would it, think it, that's better than two Final Fours in the last is. 14 years. If I'm the board. It doesn't – the Final Four to me is like, what does that even mean anymore? If I'm the board Win it. and I'm the Regents, we got to have a conversation. And we got to sit down – we have to sit down with Tom Izzo in the offseason. Like, I, I understand what he means to that program, so you don't want to fire him. I mean, this is a program that doesn't win a lot of national championships in any sport. But at the same time, it's got to be a situation where Tom can realize, like, look, it's just not working. Actually, you're hindering the program. I, I do have to disagree with you on that. I, I do disagree with you on that. I, I don't think there's anybody. Um, I don't think there's anybody better to lead Michigan State's resurgence right now than Tom Izzo. I don't. I like, mean, I, I Coach I, K retired after getting to the getting to the Final Four. Coach K was like, eh, yeah. got to hang him up. Yeah. Coach K's an interesting fellow, man. I mean, yeah. he's kind of a weirdo, though. He's definitely you know? a weirdo. I mean, his, his mentor is Bobby Knight. another yeah. weirdo, but. <laughs> kind of a weirdo. 100%. You know? but, but a lot of those old guys, look. look at college, was, Jay Wright. Well, like, one in that title, one another one. Saw where basketball was going. Exactly. But I, that's what we're talking about yeah. here, though, too. Like, if you can deal with today's current athlete, right. God bless you. I want those guys to stay. I think college basketball is better with. Tom Izzo in it, Mike Shashevsky in it, Roy Williams in it, yeah. uh, Jim Beheim in it, uh, Jay Wright in it, yeah. then without it. Dusty I do. May. Lou Olson, Bobby you know, Huggins. I, I mean, uh, Bobby Huggins is my favorite coach to never win. I love Bobby right. Huggins. The, there, there are no legends in college football anymore. We talked about that, and I think – uh, every year we're, we're losing legends in college basketball. I mean, when I was watching the tournament this week, I saw Gene Cady sitting in the stands. Oh, yeah. I saw Roy Purdue. Williams sitting in the stands. Jim Nance. Jim Nance. Yeah, Jim Hello, Nance. We don't even have legends in the broadcast booth anymore. <laughs> Nobody wants to be. like so. so Should be I, Brian Anderson. Yeah. I do believe uh, that Tom Izzo is better equipped to lead Michigan State's resurgence potential resurgence as anybody in the country. I, I, I do believe that. And, you know, maybe two years down the road, if it doesn't happen for him, then I think you have that conversation. Yes, I, but Okay, I, so maybe not the conversation. Mm -hmm. Maybe the conversation is a, little, is a little wild, considering what he's done. 24 years in a row going to the tournament. That's nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. he, won, he did win one. So maybe that's too wild. But I just look at it this way, Ryan. In all sports, they eventually evolve. They eventually evolved. USC was the stuff of legend in football in the 60s. And then takes um, Alabama takes over. And then the game gets faster in the 90s. And then Jimmy Johnson learns how to recruit these Florida kids. The game just keeps evolving. Those coaches, though, they don't get to evolve with it. 
Like at some point, the game changes, and those coaches that are legends, they fade into the abyss and insert new legends. New legends like Jimmy Johnson, new legends like Nick Saban, new legends like insert Dabo Sweeney or whoever's balling there. It just keeps changing. And I think Tom Izzo's path, I mean, I think his path, I think it's over. Look what schools are doing. And I said this. You got to have the energy, the patience, navigate the NIL tournament, knowing what players to keep, knowing how to get the five-star players because your program mm. isn't necessarily in the, in the forefront of the light. It's tough. I said Michigan's going to grab their coach from this tournament. And I was right. Three other schools just hired new coaches from this tournament. They plucked them from the small schools, <laughs> and they put them right onto their roster. And it's – it's the way of it now. It's the young guy. Yeah. It's the I mean, who wouldn't want Shaka Smart as their head coach? Who? Boy, who, he's a good coach. Who wouldn't want I loved him since VCU. And you know what? He's a perfect example of what I was talking about with Rick Patino, Richard Patino. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't work at Minnesota. It was really his first big time gig. It didn't work, but he goes to New Mexico. He wins a conference tournament after you know, finishing last for three yeah. years in a row. Uh, three years ago, and then goes there, wins the conference tournament. He's a good coach. Shock is smart. Yeah. Yes, VCU went to Texas. It didn't work out. He got fired. So you know, it he's better on a small school. Exactly. But I mean, Marquette is not a small no, basketball school. No, but it's a smaller school. school. Yeah, sure. But again, I just that's a perfect example of yeah. somebody who just because it didn't work out somewhere yeah. doesn't mean guys like that don't find their niche, don't I find love their that place. Guy. And also, too, you, to, to add to that point, you're 100 percent right. To add to that point, Minnesota wasn't a good basketball school before he got there. So sometimes don't punish people right. for something that was already in place. Texas hasn't been good since Kevin Durant left right? to, to a certain extent. So don't punish these coaches for going to these programs that aren't attaining success because mm -hmm. it goes back to recruiting. You know, So he goes back, like you said, to smaller schools. He's coaching his butt off, man. Maybe that's the guy for Michigan. Hey, if I'm a school right now, yeah. when Marquette's done, and I think they'll be in the final. I would knock on their door, on his door, and I would throw the book at him and say, come on over. Here's another one. Louisville. Here's, here's another one. What if you're – you know, MSU. What if you're a program and you're watching the, uh, the NCAA tournament and you watch what Oakland did to Kentucky? Do you not look at some of the assistants under Campy? Like some of these assistants on the team under Campy, you see what they put together in Oakland enough to beat a Kentucky. I'm looking at that as well. I think if you're going to a mid-major school, you yeah, want well, yeah. their head coach. You know what I mean? You True. want the head coach of, of the mid major show. And obviously, Camp, you know, Campy's, what, 60-some years old. He's not going to go yeah. yeah, he's not gonna go, go anywhere at that point. But, you know, when you talk about uh, Dusty May, and, and that was uh, the news a couple of days ago, the Michigan hired Florida Atlantic, uh, their head coach, who made it to the Final Four last year. He's 47 years old, Dusty May. Um, Ward Manuel contacted John Beeline. John Beeline played a crucial role into this and uh, sold May that Michigan was the right spot and not Louisville. And apparently he had the, the pick of the litter Midwest when it guy. comes to that. He's from Indiana, um, and he is everything that it sounds like. He everything. wanted Florida Atlantic. Yeah, he wanted Florida <laughs> Atlantic. He's going to win at Michigan. Yep. And, um, Quick, too. He's got the look. Yeah, and what Quick. do they have? Three it, it, or four guys on that Florida Atlantic yeah. team that have uh, one year of eligibility left. That maybe you can get them to come with you and have a quick resurgence for Michigan basketball. I think that would be incredible. Now I don't know what the admission standards would be, and uh, there are none anymore. <laughs> well, kudos to the the Mays. Uh, I think it was Mays and Blue or somebody that that pointed out. Jalen Rose tweeted about it as well. You know, two guys that are leading their teams right now, currently in the Sweet 16, were committed to play for Juwan Howard, but emissions wouldn't let them in. So oh. would, um, you know, Terrence Shannon Jr. from Illinois is just one of those guys that was committed to Juwan Howard, but the admissions at Michigan would right. not let them in. So I don't know about the Florida Atlantic students, uh, basketball players, if they would be. I, I just don't know. You know, it seems like from a basketball perspective, it would be great if they were able to come. Sure. But I just don't think it's a slam dunk to say, oh, yeah, just because you played for Dusty May at Florida Atlantic, you're automatically enrolled at the University of Michigan. Um, I just don't know if Michigan is there yet. Well, maybe he has Freaking that in his deal already. Hey, but, I'll come, but I'm bringing these guys yeah, with me. I do want to say True. that I have been as harsh a critic as anybody on Ward Manual. 
but it seems like he has done a tremendous job in this coaching hire. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will say John Beeline deserves the credit uh, as well or just as much credit, and you are right. John Beeline deserves credit. But, you know, there is no John Beeline involved in this search if Ward Manuel, Manuel doesn't out. pick up the phone and say, John, can you help me with this search? What are we looking for? What kind of program do we want to be? What is your take on the next hire at Michigan? Can you help advise me? And I just think that that is uh, tremendous. Yeah, and this is Jalen Rose, the Jalen Rose tweet. I was talking about uh, Caleb Love uh, from Arizona and Terrence Shannon Jr., both uh, from Illinois, both leading their teams in the Sweet 16, uh, just couldn't get in. Yeah. To Michigan, so I, I'm I'm glad that was pointed out uh, as a little bit of a defense to Juwan Howard uh, as well. Still a, a Michigan man, and, and absolutely didn't work out great, but um, you know, no no shade his way. Absolutely, that's why, um, you, got, that's why you got little brothers, yeah. man. And that's why you got a little brothers. Jalen Rose there defending his fat five brother. I agree. So, Look, man, nah, tell the whole story. I like that. Yeah, and people can handle it, right? I yeah. mean. Yeah, no, I mean, this wasn't what you anticipated. But, again, Michigan would look a lot different if Caleb Love and Terrence Shannon Jr. were on the team. Would. Just would. Um, so, yeah, but kudos to Ward Manuel, man. Uh, it, it appears, and there's no guarantees for success, but it appears that they hit an absolute home run with Dusty May. This is a this is a great hire thus far. We'll see how it plays out when he starts coaching. But right now, it is a really good move for War Manuel, and it's one of those kind of moves. Man, if this move works out, it's so funny that narrative word, the narrative. Because if this works out, you know what the narrative now becomes about War Manuel. It becomes, well, you know, War's the reason actually why Jim Harbaugh even stayed because they were gonna let him go. Right. But he lessened his contract, You've so been he stayed that. because it happened. But now you see a move like this, and if it really works, now you can go back and look at the analyst and say, well, you know what? Maybe if he doesn't lessen that contract, then Jim leaves, and we don't even get to the three Ohio State wins in the national championship after year three. So it's funny. If this is successful, that will become the narrative. No doubt. Yeah. So, um, guys, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're expected to be joined by Greg Kelser of Valley Sports Pistons analyst there, of course, uh, national championship player at Michigan State. With Irvin Magic Johnson, we'll talk to Man, Greg so. Kelsey. Think he knows a little something about Izzo? I think so. We'll do that next. But first, a message from Wake Up Woodward. That's right, everybody. Wake Up Woodward. It is a brand new sports show here on WSN. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. live right here on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports talk banter and live fan interaction all right here on detroit's number one sports network woodward sports we'll be right back every year after a cold and dreary winter metro detroiters come together for two things tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world a new season of tigers baseball is here and we're bringing in the new season as only woodward sports knows how broadcasting live from the biggest party it's the grand slam festival at the detroit opera house come party with 4,000 detroit sports fans starting with wake up woodward and rolling into big d energy this is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. The most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. The off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. 
And Wilbur Sports wants to remind you about the QB uh, challenge. Went to, uh, excuse me, went two tickets to the home opener. That's the Lions home opener. You're talking about team went to the NFC and won the North Division last year. How would you like two free tickets, you say? All you got to do is scan the QR code. You scan the QR code or go to WilburSports.com. You can find your way into the challenge. And then all you do, you register, you win. You get a chance to go to the opening game of the year. Who will that be? Can't wait to see. QB Challenge from Shake Shack. Sports Network, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazaway. Uh, we've got uh, Pete Spivak. We've got Mike here as well. We'll be joined by Gregory Kelser in just uh, a moment. But, um, you know, we were just having a conversation about Izzo. I'm, I'm excited to, to see what uh, Greg Kelser thinks about, you know, Michigan State basketball, where it's at. And obviously we'll talk uh, Pistons with them because this season is coming to a merciful end. I mean, we've got, what, 12 games to go. Yeah. Um, I, I turned on the Piston game for a little while uh, over the weekend. Was Why? it yesterday? Um, I I literally didn't know some of the players on the floor. Yeah, like I didn't. Cade even, was out again. Yeah, Cade was out. You know, Duran was out. Yeah. Isaiah Stewart's out. Um, Sar Thompson was out. He's out obviously for out. Yeah, and so, and so is. Yeah. But like, I didn't even know what was happening. Some of the players that that played yesterday. You ready for this, Braylon? Yep. Um, here you go. Um, uh, I, I don't even know how to say his name. Not only do you not Ch- know, Chemezi Metu started for the for the Pistons. Chemezi Metu. Oh yeah. Uh, Tro- oh yeah, Chemezi. Yeah. Troy. Troy. Mez. Mez. Troy Brown Jr. Oh yeah, the Troy. football player from the Patriots. Yeah, Troy Brown, good receiver. Um. <laughs> Um, buddy Bayheim, I know that because oh, I know buddy. his dad. As Bayheim's son, um, he can shoot that tray. Tozman Evbu Wowman. Oh yeah, he played twenty nine minutes Big yesterday. Toe. Is Tobu Tosan T O S A N Big Toe, okay. and then the last Isn't name E V B U O M W A N. Can you imagine being George Bly? Great. I mean, I just didn't. Oh wait, a uh, guy played twelve minutes. Jared Roden. A little easier for you. Um, so um, guys, I just had, I, I I didn't even know who was on the floor. Yeah, I went to one of those Pistons games early on in the year, and I same thing. Playing some guys were in the game. I think Killian wasn't playing. K wasn't playing. Jalen Duran wasn't playing. Uh, insert player that starts with the Pistons wasn't playing. So I was like, who is this guy? Who's that guy? But. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I look at it like this. Even though we can't pronounce these guys' names, and you're like, who is this dude? NBA is such a hard league to make. It's the hardest league out of all of them to make. Those guys are there for a reason. Like, them guys can hoop. Just may not know their names. No, yeah, I, and I understand that. Yeah. It's just, it, it just feels like um, this is what it feels like to me, Braylon. They're giving up on the program. Well, it feels like to me that – you want to see some progress, yeah. right? I mean, if you're going to do all this losing, you just want to see some progress. And I'm not sure where that progress is. I'm trying to pull positives out of some of these games. Maybe you find a player. Maybe they played well in a certain type of situation. Maybe they're learning. Um, maybe they're getting better out of a time. I mean, anything that you can pull positively and – it feels like it's just going the other way, even. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you. It, that's why I said it starts at the top. Like, it starts at the top. We can talk about Troy Weaver until we're blue in the face, until you have an owner that cares about your program, or, excuse me, your franchise, and that's Tom Gortz in this case. I think it's just a tough situation, man, because you look at success. You see what uh, success looks like. The people up top are making decisions. They're boots on the ground. They're hands on deck, and they're trying to make things better. They're trying to create the change you need to see, and it just doesn't – feel that way, at least. It doesn't feel like he's ever run. It doesn't feel like hey, his team is taking the right stride. At least next week at Little Caesars on Friday and Sunday, we're going to have some good matchups, right? NCAA. Did, did you see the Midwest well, wait a, Yeah, wait a minute, if you, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, you still want to stay in the Pistons? Yeah, if you okay. don't mind. No, this, go ahead. This is how bad the Pistons are, okay? Hmm. This is how bad they are. Now, I know that the line doesn't indicate, you know, who's going to win or anything like that. But the Detroit Pistons tonight in New York are a 16 and a half point underdog to the New York Knicks. Now, 16 and a half. Listen to me for a minute. You will not see 
many times in any particular year a team that is as large of an underdog in an NBA game as 16 points. That sounds crazy. It is almost unheard of. And the Knicks aren't world beaters. They're 42 and 28. They're fine. They're a <laughs> middle of the road team in in the East, and their best player is out, Julius Randle. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of how difficult it is to be a Pistons fan. That you you just this thing's going the other way. They got crushed by the Pelicans yesterday. I mean, that's a good team though. Now I I think you know healthy the the Pelicans are yeah. You know with Zion and Sly C- Pelican C J McCollum and and everything like that. Sorry, so man. anyway, we'll get Greg Kelser in in a couple of minutes. But I just wanted to point that out, guys. Uh, pretty incredible. It, it's stuff. tough to 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 be that bad. Yeah, it is, is what you're saying. It is hard to be it's that to bad be that in the bad. NBA. It's embarrassingly bad for this franchise that it's a proud franchise. They just celebrated the old four team last Sunday. And you did a horrible job too. And, and look and look where they are now. It's it's really it's very sad. It's very sad. But as they bring up the sweet sixteen, that's uh pretty good <laughs> matchups here. Yeah, so um again. Th- you can go to games. Little Caesars Arena is the Midwest region um, host, and there are two games on Friday and one game on Sunday. And um, first game is going to be at seven thirty-nine. Thank you for that. It will be the Purdue game. So um, Friday. So so Detroit gets the Friday Sunday. So Purdue. Hold on, let me double check. I'm, that. Watch, I'm looking at it right now. Purdue and Gonzaga, the one five matchup, seven thirty nine on uh, True uh, TBS and True TV, and then you've got Creighton and Tennessee tipping off at ten oh nine Detroit Ooh. time. It's gonna be a long night for me. That is what incredibly dumb, don't you think? Who's going? To that well, game? they're playing double header. When but, do you want them to start? Five. On a Friday night? Why not? That's fine with me. 6.30. Okay, 6.30. 6.30. I'll meet, meet you in the middle. 6.30. I agree with Ryan on this, though, man. Like 10.09? The first game on Friday night is 7.09. In Texas. <laughs> so they're an hour so earlier. That's 8.09 over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, 7, 7.09 our time, but it's 6.09 oh, sure. their time. Yeah. So I don't know why you do that. I mean, is... is um. I don't. I got nothing for you guys on the start times of these. I'm wondering games. how the tickets are for that. Do you think it's a sellout at, at Little Caesars? I can't imagine. I mean, I saw zero advertising. Yeah. On this, yeah. like if we weren't in this business, I doubt I even would have known there were going to be games at Little Caesars Arena. Well, we need to get. That's how little I have heard about this. We need to get in touch with our guys, the Detroit Sports Commission. Yeah. Get well, they're so busy with the draft though, too, right. and with no real draw. I mean, you know, Michigan State, Michigan, Oakland. Yeah. There's really no local flavor. I mean, you've got Purdue is is a Big Ten team. Tennessee, Creighton. You know, um, you you've got Creighton involved there. You've got Gonzaga. I mean, I, I'm not sure if Creighton and Gonzaga are traveling to Detroit. So, you you really feel like, you know, and that put yeah. You you're not really putting a ton of seats, a ton of butts in the seats. Yeah, it's more like we did you a favor versus actually trying to make a profit. Or I mean, to turn a profit. yeah, I mean, Purdue is the closest team here. Can you uh, imagine if Oakland was in the Midwest and they got through? <laughs> Can you imagine? And MSU, obviously. Yeah. What what draws those would have been? But they didn't do us any favors. Right. The NCAA. And I think in two years, the Final Four is back here in Detroit. 2027. Yeah. And that's going to be, unfortunately, probably at Ford Field, right? Yep. <laughs> you know, which I despise. I like seeing it at an arena where a basketball is supposed to be played. Absolutely. But it is what it is. I think Greg Kelser is on the line. Oh, is he? Do it, Mike, do we have Greg? Greg tells me he's on the line. Is Mike uh, awake in there? The oh, there we go. We I'm do got Greg. Line. All right, okay. Greg. Hey, uh, Greg Kelser uh, in New York uh, with Bally Sports Detroit. Pistons analyst covering the game tonight. Pistons and Knicks. Greg, thanks so much for the time. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank Good you, Greg. Gee, what's going on, baby? Bright later, man. Gentlemen, hey, hey Greg, let, let me let me ask you first. We we were just talking about the NCAA tournament and Tom Izzo and Michigan State. From your perspective, and, and Tom Izzo, very uh, candid after the game, said he is going to make a further run in this tournament, or he's going to die trying. 
also says, hey, if you want to fire me, fine. I'll go coach somewhere else. I'm not done yet. He was very fired up after that game. From your perspective, Greg, uh, how would you characterize where the Michigan State basketball program is right now, and what does Tom Izzo need to do to, in fact, make deeper runs in the tournament? I thought um, uh, I, I thought that Michigan State um, pretty much got all they could out of this team. Guard heavy, not a lot of athleticism on the wings, and and in the front court, um, the centers, uh, the power forwards, and to um, to be able to make a deep run, to be able to get to the Final Four, you got to have that. And Michigan State's had it in the past, plenty of it. Uh, you think about those Tom Izzo teams that made it to Final Fours. What, what did they do? What did they all have in common? They were solid rebounding teams, and, Shoot. and uh, they took care of business in the paint. Uh, in addition to having good guard play, and this team, I thought this year did it primarily on guard play. Uh, I went to a game and they didn't get any scoring from the front line, and you're only going to go so far with that. So I think his uh, his first goal will have to be to show up his his big people. And, and try to get some athleticism because that's what a game is now. You've got to be able to have that. And um, uh, North Carolina certainly had it, and, and, and Connecticut has it. And those teams that are being looked at as favorites, they all have it. They've got the balance between the two, the, the front court and the back court. So uh, that's where I think he needs to go first and foremost. But I'm not surprised to hear him, you know, his comments. Tom is a competitor. Uh, you know, he's very proud of the fact that he's been to eight Final Fours. That's helped him get to the Hall of Fame. But I don't think he's satisfied with the idea that he's only won once. Now, you know, to his credit and in defense of him, uh, eight Final Four trips and probably two times they were the best team there. Those other six times, they were not. And it sort of played out that way. Uh, even in Detroit in '09, I think it was, when they got all the way to the final game against North Carolina. They, they met that North Carolina team in Detroit earlier in the year, and and it wasn't close. And then they played them in the last game in Detroit, and it wasn't close. But they got there, and there's something to be said for getting there, but I know Tom wants to win another one desperately. You guys call him Greg. I've been calling him Uncle Greg my whole life. What's up, G. Kelsey, <laughs> Uncle Greg? Uh, Henry up, Ford's man? finest, man. Henry Ford's finest. Uh, I, put, I got this cool picture off of a line earlier today. It was a picture of you uh, and Magic. I want to say this was after you guys won. The, uh, the championship. He has a. You guys on the basketball court. You're dunking it backwards. I think there's red two Mercedes on the uh, <laughs> on the playgrounds back in the. Uh, I think it's East Lansing. So it's a dope picture. I thought I put it up there. So 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 here's the story on that. You know, all year, all all that year, Urban and I, we and you know some of our teammates, we always when we were riding on those buses to Purdue and some of those other places. You know, we always dreamed about the cars that we would want to drive if we were to ever get a chance to. Uh, make enough money to buy one. And um, Irvin had his eye, he always had his eyes on the Mercedes. And, you know, being from Detroit and uh, Big Three, I, I was sort of looking at a Cadillac. But um, but then as time went on, I decided I wanted to do the Mercedes thing too. So we got those cars after we won the national championship. We, and Irvin had decided that he was going to turn pro, and obviously I was a senior, so I was going pro. Uh, we got those cars about five days apart. He got his in Chicago. I got mine out of Cleveland. And we brought them back to campus. And we were riding around, and they had photographers taking pictures of us. And we took pictures in front of Jenison Fieldhouse. We took pictures on a basketball court over in the Brody Complex. And the next thing we know, the next day, those pictures were in newspapers all across the country. And uh, it was incredible. And, you know, a lot of people thought the university Scandal. had bought those cars for us. Yeah. Yeah. But that didn't happen. Uh, I... I I wish they had bought it for us, but I paid every dime for it. And tell me about you know what? And I and I still and I still have the car. Oh wow! Uh -huh. I remember I remember here. seeing that car back in the day. I definitely yeah. do. Well, take us through it. You talked about it in 1979. You guys win the national championship. Since it's playing on right now, what's that feeling like? I mean, I've never I, all these years I've known you, I've never asked you that question. And what was it like to actually cut down the nets? And you did it against Larry Bird. What was that moment uh -huh. like? Well, you know, guys, we, we, we had a shot at it the year before. We had a shot at it in 1978, my junior year, and we lost to Kentucky in the regional final. Uh, 
the game that would have put us in the Final Four in St. Louis. Uh, we lost by three points in, in a game where we allowed them to control tempo and we played that slowdown style and it played to our detriment. We led pretty much the whole game, but they caught us right near the end and they ended up beating us by three points. Um, we were driven, absolutely focused on getting back with a chance to get to the Final Four again. Now, it wasn't easy as that. We had some hurdles to get over and, and thankfully we did. But by the time the tournament came around, we, we knew we were the best team in the country. We felt we were anyway, and, and it was just a matter of going out. And if we played to our potential, even though we had some, some teams with better records, I think we went into the tournament, we'd lost six games. Indiana State was undefeated. Uh, UCLA, I think it only lost two or three games. Uh, Arkansas had a good team. Carolina had a good team. A lot of good teams. Notre Dame had a good team. But we were clicking, and we won 15 of our last 16 games. Uh, to get to get that championship, and and uh, it was nervous times for sure. You know, the closer you get, the more nervous, uh, and the more on pins and needles you may find yourself. But uh, we we played great basketball, and, and we won our. We we learned from the year before because we didn't walk it up against anybody. We ran against them all, and we won our five games by an average of twenty points. Uh, the closest game was the national championship game, and we won that by eleven. So uh, we we made it. We made it very clear without dispute that we were the best team that year. And taking those nets down was, was a relief because, you know, when you set your goals and you know that you, 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 you're good enough but you've got to play it out, when you finally get it, it's more relief than jubilation. Jubilation, I think, comes a little later. Yeah. But I, uh, I got the net from one end of the court. Irvin Johnson has the net from the other end. It's not like now where everybody gets a little piece of the net. Yeah, you got the whole <laughs> I net. I got the I got the entire net, Woo. guys. <laughs> I love it. I'm not mad at that. Uh, that Kentucky game that you guys that motivated you, 19 and 13 from the big fella, ain't bad. Look at you, Braylon, doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's so great. <laughs> Talking to Greg Kelser, of course, national champion with the Michigan State Spartans back in 1979, and a Pistons analyst. Uh, a, you know, you just stick it up with college for one more second, Greg. College basketball and basketball as a whole always evolves. What kind of team do you believe wins a national championship now? I mean, we saw Jay Wright talking about Kentucky the other night. Jay Wright says, look, you cannot win with the one and dones anymore. You're just not going to win with, you know, 18, 19 year olds playing against 22, 23, 24 year olds with uh, in some of these cases. If you could build the perfect college basketball team, uh, how how do you do it? Okay, Ryan. So here's what I would do. I'm 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 still from the old old school way of thinking. I'm gonna start with a big guy in the middle like Zach Eady. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know what's gonna happen with him when he goes into the draft because the NBA doesn't use big post up guys with their backs to the basket, you know, six, seven feet away from the hoop like they used to. He would be the number one pick in the draft 15, 20 years ago. And now he may not get drafted in the first round. I don't okay. know. Yeah. But but I would start there. And then I'd put I'd put I'd put me two very athletic wing guys that can handle the basketball and, and you know, maybe get some offense on their own but can also shoot, play in the mid range. And then my guards would be uh, guys that can race up the floor. I, I, I'd like to play a fast tempo game. And, and, and they've got to be able to shoot. They've, they've got to be able to shoot the three. The three line is there. So you've got to utilize it. I probably wouldn't do it as much as some teams do. But it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a weapon. So, you know, that, that's what I'm looking. I'm still looking to play fast. But I'm looking that when I can't, when I can't um, get it in transition, I want to be able to throw it in the post. I still believe in the post game. I still believe in the mid range game, and and I'm I'm the three levels the, the, at the basket in the mid range and out beyond the arc, and and you know I work my guys as as hard as I can on the on the uh, importance of defense and, and communicating and and uh, you know being on a string defensively, but you've got to have athletes. You have to have athleticism. I think today. No doubt about it. Uh, talking to Greg Kelser and Greg, I, I you know, I mercifully ha- uh, have to t- ask you about the Detroit Pistons now. I, I'm trying, Greg. I am trying my best to pull any kind of positive I can 
out of this team. Like, and, and I look, you know, just in the last week alone, you know, Dayton going back to the last Sunday, you know, end of game situation. You know, they 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 go too early, take a shot. It should have been the last shot taken. Uh, Miami comes down with a rebound, hits a winner at the buzzer. Then they lose by 25, 19, 27. Then yesterday, 13 points. I didn't even know half the team that played yesterday. <laughs> uh, I, and and I, I just, I don't, I feel like it's getting worse, not better. W from your perspective, what are you seeing? What should Pistons fans hang on to here? Um, you know, in the last week, into the off season, anything uh, to, to get on board? Well, I'll agree with you. It's not getting better today mm -hmm. uh, because in addition to, uh, you know, the season having gone awry, now you got a bunch of people injured. You know, we were hoping that the last 28 games after the All-Star break would be a um, a forum for for improvement, developing, and, and growing competence, and, and maybe winning. Uh, I was hoping they'd win maybe 10 or 12 games and take some of that into the off season, sort of like what Orlando did last year. They, you know, they started off poorly, and but then they they found out how to win. Uh, last year, it wasn't going to put them in the playoffs or the play-in situation, but it gave them a taste of it, and uh, and they were able to go into the uh, off season with you know feeling pretty good about where they were heading, and then they came out. I think they started the season ten and three, and you know they're going to be a playoff team this year. But it all started last year. I was hoping that that would happen for the Pistons, but can't happen if you don't have people, your, your key people available, and that's where we are right now. We don't have the key people available. So you do have to just figure out a way to still be positive about it. You can't, you can't quit the season. you still got to finish the last 11 games. And what I saw yesterday, well, let, first let me go back to that situation. You mentioned uh, in the game where, uh, I guess, I think it was Miami, where Kay hey. took the shot. A little too early. Yeah, he did take it early, and he knows that Kay's a very smart, very intelligent basketball player. He had just hit a shot from that exact spot, so I know his confidence was probably high that he could hit another one. But I think the reason why he took that shot probably four or five seconds before he should have is because he knew they were coming for him. They were going to come and double him, and they were going to make him give the basketball up. So he took the shot before that double could come. Uh, and in hindsight, he probably should have let him double and then pass the basketball and trust your teammates. Um, but he's young, and, and that's part of the learning process. It can be very painful. And then Miami comes down and does exactly what you hoped they wouldn't do. They took advantage of the mistake, and they hit a shot at the buzzer and got out of there uh, with a victory. But, you know, the next time that happens, I can promise you that, you know, he will take the last shot. He will. And it might not be him taking it. It might be his teammate. But you got to learn first, I guess. Hey, look, um, I have a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cut you off. My bad. No, 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 no. I, so I was just saying, you know, what, what? the only thing we can do now is what we saw last night. You know, they, they, they lost that game in the first quarter. But you got some pretty good performances from some of the guys that, as Ryan said, you haven't heard heard about, you know, uh, uh, Metsu and uh, – I mean, uh, Metu and uh, 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 Beheim both had really good games. Uh, you know, the guys that are out there to play, they got to play. They can't control. They didn't ask for the, you know, they didn't, they didn't create the situation. But it's here for them now. It's their moment. They got to take advantage of it. Uh, Unc, how good can Jalen Duran play? I, I saw the change in the team. He was hurt early in the year. But you see the change when he came back. He got hurt again. And then when he came back, you see the change again. I mean, he's he scores on offense as well as rebounds. I mean, he's a rebounding machine. How good is the ceiling for this kid? Well, that's the thing. He's, he still has a lot of room to go to get to that ceiling. Yeah. And, 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 and at the same time, he's sixth in the league in field goal percentage shooting. He's fifth in the league in, in – um, uh, uh, block, uh, excuse me, rebounding, and 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 he's shooting a heck of a percentage from the, I mean, from the free throw line. So he's his post game is is coming. Uh, his offense is a lot better. His rebounding is consistent. He's a good rim protector. What he has to now get is that little mid range shot. I don't uh, I don't see him knocking down shots from beyond the arc, but I certainly could see him playing 15 feet away from the basket and. And if a guy falls off, just pop that little 15, 14-footer. That's the next area of improvement I think I see for him. But he's young. I think he's 20 years old. He can be really, really good, really special. Big, strong. Doesn't even know how strong he is.
Greg Kelser joins us. Bally Sports Detroit, of course, covers the Pistons on a nightly basis. We'll see him against the Knicks tonight. I hope you get the mix with Clyde down there. He was always my favorite growing up, still is, as a lifelong Knicks fan growing up there. Uh, do you know <laughs> do, do you get to hang with Clyde tonight there, Greg? I don't know because he was – he may be there. You know, we played the Knicks several times, and I've yeah. seen him a couple of times this season. This season. But sometimes they have uh, Wally Zerbiak oh, yeah. uh, doing the games. They kind of well, scare it. Good. But um, I was a big Walt Frazier fan. In fact, I was a big Knicks fan. I was a big Celtic fan in the 60s Ooh, before Braylon was there. Oh, whoa. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a bomb. Yes. I was a huge, huge Celtic fan. Well, you know, I have family in Boston. I lived in Boston when I was a kid for a couple of years. Okay. I mean, I think um, they, they're I winners. Big, big Bill Russell guy. I don't blame you. Uh, you know, Bill Russell and Sam Jones, Casey Jones, those guys were my uh, those were my basketball role models in yep. addition to my dad. But uh, when Russell uh, retired in, in 1969, the Knicks became my favorite team, and they won the championship in – in 1970 70 and, and 72, yeah, you know, 73. Braylon, Braylon, you can probably relate to this. You know, when you once you become a professional athlete, it just opens up the arena for you to maybe meet and see some, get to know some of these folks that you grew up admiring and idolizing. And that's what happened to me. You know, once I got to college and then yeah. became a pro, I got to meet the likes of Willis Reed and, mm. and Walt Frazier and Earl Monroe. And these guys were just fantastic. They were great. And they were fan. fan they're basketball fans, even though they're Hall of Famers. They remain basketball fans, and they were fans of mine and, and Urban in college. And, you know, they followed us as pros. But, uh, yeah, I, I love the Knicks and their history. It's hard for me to imagine that. How about this? A story to franchise as the Knicks are, and they really are. How about the Pistons have more NBA championships I know. than the Knicks? I know. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that something? <laughs> I was 11 years old, Greg, when they won. I'm 62 right now, so – I've been waiting a long time. I saw that Pistons 4 team reminded me of the 73 Knicks so much. Uh, I just love mm -hmm. both of those teams. I think they were they were a parallel together, those two teams. Yeah, but you, they a lot of similarities. Team basketball over yep. individual. Defense. No, you, I, you're definitely right about that, uh, Unc. You know, I remember the reason why I went to Michigan, don't tell Dad this, is you know Charles Woodson, that 97 season. Like, that was – like I always loved Michigan because of Pops, but when, when I saw Woodson do it, I was like, oh, man, this is it. This is the place I got to be. I got to make it happen like him and yeah. stuff. So. so then for him to become my big brother <laughs> back in the mission and then actually hanging out with him on a regular and a consistent, it's like, dang, like it, it works. I mean, you, you're privy to so much. <clears throat> you had a great, great career at Michigan. There's no question about that. Uh, you know, I know I've told this story before, but I remember you when you were a little boy just hanging out in the gym, running all over the place while we were playing basketball. But you know, saw that athleticism at a very young age. Uh, I just wish you had gone to Michigan State. You, know? <laughs> you almost did. did. I almost did. He <laughs> almost did. I almost did. Hey, Greg, before I let you go, man, just back to the college for a second. Of the Sweet 16 remaining teams, are you on board? Was Is it still UConn? I mean, I like Marquette a little. Who do you like uh, in the Final Four? Well, I hope it's not UConn, I, I, because that, that's what March Madness is. I mean, yeah. everybody's picking UConn, and, and and for good reason. But I hope it's somebody else, because that would add to the thrill and the uh, you know the uncertainty and the unpredictable nature of of the, of uh, college basketball this time of year. Uh, there's some good teams out there, and and that's the beauty of one and done. Anybody can can have a big night, and, and anybody can have an off night, and, and it can just reshape the whole thing. I hope it's not Utah, UConn. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I mean, there's 11 seeds still available in NC State. They weren't they weren't going to be there if they didn't win their tournament. And then, of course, they hang on and beat Oakland the other day. That Oakland team was a fun follow as well. Shout out to the uh, Oakland Grizzlies and Greg Campy. Greg Campy is is a tremendous coach. I'm glad he got that stage uh, the other day. I would love to have uh, seen them uh, carry it on and continue on. Um, but what a season for them, and I, I hope that they get another shot really, really soon, like next year. The great Greg Kelser. Oh. You can watch him tonight. Bally Sports Detroit, Pistons and Knicks. Uh, Braylon, one more thing. Uh, my mom just texted me and said, Henry Ford class is 77. She says hello. <laughs> <laughs> she says hello. Yeah, she's, uh, she, she graduated with my wife. Yep. Um, 
Your mom and uh, and, and my wife Donna, they were in the class of '77. I was in the class of '75. Ooh, look at that! Hey, I'm Greg, uh, got, got seniority. <laughs> you still rolling with those basketball camps, aren't you, Greg? Absolutely, and thank you for mentioning that. I, I'm just going to tell the folks if I can. Of course, just yeah. go to my website, Greg, Greg Gregory Kelser dot com slash basketball we've got four camps coming up this uh this summer and we'd love to uh see your children at them thanks guys oh it's appreciate our pleasure it. we love it man they're, we we appreciate you always saying yes to us greg yeah absolutely they're great camps gregory kelser dot com any anytime anytime you're appreciate both my you favorite guys. you know you, all three of you guys Tom, thanks Ryan, greg. and braylon oh, oh, well, make nobody sure you be, say hi to clyde for n- me tonight. nobody better than you That's so popular nobody say, better yeah. than you <laughs> greg thanks buddy appreciate it my friend all right all see right, you greg luck. all right okay, guys. bring home a win yeah absolutely we're gonna take a break guys when we come back move, we'll get into uh some detroit lions talk some nfl talk uh, where's camp said owners meetings league meetings going on uh i actually called on saturday again you, you, and the, you and the sheriff, the, you guys got on speed well, dial now. I, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's in, it's it's incredible. Like, it's very easy to call the police no and try to get some information. It's incredible. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll talk Lions, NFL, owners meetings going on right now. We'll do that next. But first, a message from Planet Fitness. That's right, Planet Fitness. $10 a month is all the cost. They stand on business. $10 a month for you to come in, get in shape, feel great. Planet Fitness, where well, your fitness is essential and it's home of a squeaky clean gym, squeaky clean, and it's the judgment free zone. Work out at your own pace. The 30 minute workout that Ryan always talks about, 30 minutes in and out. Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. And while you're working out, you better be wearing your new Detroit sports merch from woodwardsports.com and click on shop. And if you are tired of wearing that same old gear, we got new gear for you in the sports wearables department. Look out the, uh, check out the uh, Let's Go Red Wings hoodie right there in white. It's beautiful. And we have the hoodies, the tees, and the hats. They're guaranteed to turn heads. Get the latest gear right here from woodwardsports.com and click on shop. Every year after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango iced tea, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. 
ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> and chicken, pizza, and watching your favorite team play. The answer is nothing. I know the te- people that had teams out there, especially Oakland over Kentucky. I guarantee you they were eating Sirocchi's. Popping up all over the place. Canton Farm Tales has a Romulus, just to name a few. Their food is amazing, and their locations like I said, are popping up everywhere. A perfect takeout option featuring hand-breaded fried chicken, New York pizza, fresh salads, and sides. That's S-A-R-O-K-I-S dot com. Sorokis and Woolworth. That's crispy. All right, guys. Welcome back. Hour number two of the program. As of Hour number two already? 3.05 p.m. Over. on Monday, March 25th, Cam Sutton has still not turned himself in. Now I spoke to um, the Hillsbury County oh, Sheriff's spoke Department. To yes, okay. yeah, and, and I asked point blank, "Is he dead?" And they said they don't have any reason to believe that he's dead. I think one of the things that's kind of lost in translation. Yes, he has a warrant out for him, but I don't believe they are it. actively pursuing him. Yeah. So it's kind of like. You know when somebody's driving down the street? You know you have a warrant sometimes until exactly. you get pulled over. Somebody's driving down the street and uh, they've got um, you know, a warrant out for their arrest. They stop and maybe that's when they run or that's when they do something stupid or when they take off. I don't believe they are actively looking for him. Supposedly but, Mike Tomlin reached out to him. Mm-hmm. Not sure if he got in touch with them because Mike Tomlin said when asked... What did you and Cam talk about? He's like, it's none of your business. So Mike Tomlin did reach out yeah. to Cam Sutton. Not sure if they actually spoke, but if Mike Tomlin is saying none of your business, I'm saying that maybe, you know where he might be? He might be with AB. He might be with Antonio Brown. I mean, I'm just saying, I think he's alive, mm-hmm. like you said, and I just think he is Maybe in the Bahamas or something. I just I, the the whole thing sucks because it, it sucks all the way around. And and again, I, I I don't mean to minimize at all what potentially happened yeah. with in the domestic violence situation. But but from a sports perspective, this has got to be the one of the dumbest things you've ever seen in your life. Because it's from his career, away. from his perspective, okay, from his perspective. Like, you, you'll, because you're running, because you are handling this so poorly, you'll never play again in the NFL, ever, never. You pissed it away. And I think if you handled it a better way, you might have had another shot. Yeah, I, you know, last week when we were on the, uh, when we were on the group thread, you and I kind of alluded to maybe it's more, maybe it's death, because in 2024, it just doesn't make sense for someone to fall off the grid. Mm. Now, you can say that it's an act of war, but they're not actively pursuing it all you want to. He has social media. People around him have social media. Mm. People that have access to him have the news. They see what's going on. Like, everyone knows in the country that cares enough for anything or that knows the name Cam Sutton. They know he's on the lam for an alleged situation with this girl. So it just does not make sense. I don't care if it's active or not. It doesn't make sense that he hasn't turned himself in. That's why I'm still so confused about the situation. But that's why you start leading or leaning to an area that you don't want to. But people don't disappear in 2024. Nobody just – this isn't 1999 where they're looking for the Raiders. What was the center's name? Barrett Robbins who disappeared. He went down to Tijuana. They found him the next day. Mm. He was down in Tijuana having a good old time. Missed the Super Bowl. He missed the Super Bowl, but you found him the next day is what I'm saying. That's not happening now. Right. 2024, you know, you, you got to drop locations on people. It can be, you turn yourself in. So that's the latest with him. Now, owners meetings going on right now Changing as well. In Absolutely. Orlando. In Orlando. And where else? Uh, but Florida. Beautiful <laughs> weather down there. Uh, the Detroit Lions proposed a rule, and that rule has been accepted by the mm-hmm. NFL. Oh, Detroit ooh, amends like rule you. 15, section 1, article 1, to protect a club's Ability to challenge a third time following one successful challenge. So, if you get two challenges, yep. if one of those challenges is successful, you get another one. You get a third challenge. You don't need to be two for two. I guess as long as you have a timeout, right? As long as you have a timeout. Yeah. 
So, uh, so if they give you another challenge, are they giving you a timeout back as well? Well, yeah. If you have a successful challenge, you keep your timeout. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. So um, that sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Um, another uh, rule change. Lions are winning all the way around. Absolutely. Another rule change that occurred. Uh, the uh, drop hip. Or the hip drop. The hip, hip drop. drop tackle. Now, I don't get this one. Now, Bray, you could tell me. And we have a we have a video of it, I think, of yeah. what a, what a hip drop actually is. What's so bad about this type of tackle? It's because, like when they grab it around the waist of another player and you fall down to the ground and pull him down. Yeah, because when you're when you when you have the player surrounded by the waist, when you're making yeah. a, a, a tackle in that you drop all your weight. Like it's a skill to be able just to drop your weight in the exact position that it is. So when you're doing that, you're putting all the force of your weight on a leverage point. So a lot of times that's where you see knees that bend or you see ankles that get injured hips, or like backs. hips, things like that's that. That's what happened to Tony Pollard two years ago. Because now I'm tackling and now I'm like It's one thing to dive and tackle or tackle someone. It's another thing when you're tackling them. You already got them secure, and then you drop all your weight on them. You can injure somebody. Break now an a, offensive guy, you probably tibia. love this. A lot of the defensive guys hate big, it. Yeah. J, J.J. Watt was That's up another in arms way you today. Can't tackle a guy. Uh, like all the defensive guys are saying, okay, what's next? Flags? Right. That drop weight tackle, man. Like, look, I, I'm always in favor mm-hmm. of the rules that help the game. Like, even when, like, I, I call it, uh, excuse me, I call it flag football because they won't hit. They don't let the defense hit. Mm-hmm. So 100%, I, I stand with the game. But this one, they got right. So many players get those little ankle injuries, those ankle injuries. But angles, how are you going to tell? You said what? It's a judgment call How most of the time. I've been on the, I've been on the no, edge. But I, no, I'm the saying the of. referees don't even know what a catch is. Now yeah. you're going to give them an opportunity to throw a flag on a tackle. Here's a perfect example. Can I say yeah. something real quick? And we'll do this next week. But you story. know what? That's a part of something. It, it's a part. Just like the kickoff rule, they're changing. Yeah. They made, they, it's points. They want to see more points. They do want to see more points. Absolutely. Uh, games dip down to 43 points a game, yeah. down from 49 points a game collectively on average. They want those points yeah. up a little bit. But, uh, Mass, read this luxurious need yeah, trade course. for a minute because I want to correlate this to the hip drop. Uh, the drop luxurious uh, need. We've been talking about him. He was a phenomenal cornerback for the Chiefs. He They took his franchise tag, $19 million, the Titans have picked it up. They made a trade with the Chiefs. They're giving them a third-round pick next season. They're swapping seventh-round picks as well. So Legarius Sneed now goes to the Titans. They are re-signing him now to a new deal, four years, $76 million. That was the holdup, I guess, with the Lions and other squads not trading for this guy. But he essentially went for a third-round pick. Can I Can – I, but no, it, it was – it was the money. It was the contract. Yes. Yes. That's what. So you don't it? think he's worth it? No. Okay. I don't think he's worth it. And I think it proves that unless you are a defensive lineman uh, in the middle of the line on the defensive uh, end, you cannot pay that type of money for a defensive back. Why? Just go to the hip drop tackle. Right. The referees, the game doesn't allow players to play defense. So you are essentially paying for nothing. You get flagged every time you put your hands on a guy back there. Five yards, you jam him, you're getting flagged. Third down and 15, how many times have we seen it? Oop, yeah. flag, yeah. first down. You're, you're essentially paying $76 million for a guy that's not even allowed to play defense. I'm a big believer in that. Almost every game, in a big time spot and third down, big time play, you're going to get the official throw a flag Not in a situation kid, like that. I this don't know, kid's man. been great. Look, I the, don't know. Just wait. Just look, wait. Wait. Wait till he's not on the Chiefs. No, I'm not going to just. Well, I mean, he's still going to be damn good. Obviously, you have Chris Jones we'll in the see. middle. He's still going to be damn good, though. Look, Ryan, you're paying wide receivers $31 million, $32 million. Mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson might sign for $33 million. They're making all that. They're the featured players now in the NFL. You better have some good DBs. You better have some good DBs or you're going to be out here getting smoked like the Patriots were against the Eagles and Alshon Jeffries because they benched Malcolm Butler. You're going to get smoked, you know, uh, insert situation like you better start paying in these good situations like Jalen Ramsey. That was another guy that got paid. Well, 
He and Aaron Donald, to your point, he helped win that Super Bowl mm -hmm. for the Rams. Yeah, his, he did. His defense was locked down that season. So you got to have some guys on the outside because they make it easier. The more time that you can cover a wide receiver for is the more time Aiden Hutchinson has to get to the quarterback. And it's the more side though, that DJ too. Reader has to get to 100%. Yeah. But if you if you get to the quarterback, uh, I just think in this NFL, you got to have some guys that can play that cornerback position. And we've oh, seen. I, I, you got to absolutely so, have guys that can play. I'm 19, just saying. Like I'm 19, just saying. 19.9 is not, it, it's not back-breaking. I mean, it's a right. lot. It's a big tag, but 19.9 is what Well, Ryan, I guess, is saying if you pay him, you got to pay – that guy and that guy. Well, you're going to have to pay them. Well, you, pay, anyway. you pay four guys on offense, four guys on defense, right? Right. Isn't that really what you do? And then everybody else gets what's left over. Okay. So, um, so on defense, who are you paying? DJ the Lions Aiden, right now. Pay DJ, DJ Reader. Reader. You're paying um, Carl, uh, didn't Carlton make much. Davis at third. He's getting 14. Reader ain't making much. He's on one year. Yeah. Maybe you got to pay six on offense, two on defense in this team. You know, I mean, but but and just as a through. general, you got time on offense. The only guy you got to pay is is Goff, and I'm it's going to be. Ra. Oh yeah, he's going to definitely get paid. Is that Biden? Oh, I thought it was Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> it might go. be. <laughs> <laughs> it might Biden be. Over there, man. <laughs> Did you kill Bill Walsh? <laughs> um, oh, but man. yeah, I mean, I just. Uh, Again, I just I, I'm not paying that kind of a money to a defensive back right now in in today's NFL. I'm I'm drafting. I'm de developing. I hope they find, hope they the, find you know, one. You didn't throw the other angle out there, <laughs> Paul. Cam Sutton. Now the situation with Cam Sutton doesn't this make shouldn't the Lions? I, I don't want to play this. Shit he got game. cooked too. It's just a great great reason not to uh, not to go out there and pay some. Uh, big time money, and I know eleven million dollars a year doesn't sound like big money, but it's pretty decent but money. You, but eleven you, million a year. But now you go from now you go from a trash secondary to you legitimately locked up. You got a one corner, you have a two corner, and you have young safeties. Like I, I don't know, man. It's, you can't, they could have got from very suspect at that position. So now all of a sudden, you mean tell me you have Carlton Davis the third and Legarius Sneed? Talk about a perfect Brian team. Br yeah. They would have had the perfect team had they Roberts. signed this guy. I think the Lions are the best roster in the NFL, they top pop, to bottom. They probably right do. Right now, at this point, they have the best roster in the NFL. They might. They virtually, and I d you don't minimize the word virtually, they virtually have no holes. Uh, virtually. Like, sure, they need another wide receiver. They could use another defensive back. Are they better than the 49ers right now? I think they are. Okay. I Time will tell, are. right? Yeah. Brandon Ayuk Time is will tell. technically still a 49er, right? Hey, the draft is only what here? 31 days away, yeah. guys. Hey, don't I forget, if you're going if, 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 if to uh, head downtown to the draft, you've got to download the NFL One Pass app. Yep. NFL One Pass. It is live now. You can register right now. Um, it is free. But again, if you want to get in some of the different designated areas and stuff like that, you've got to register. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to put that public service announcement out there. Um, Jim Harbaugh talked today at the owners' meetings. Hey, Be sure, Jim. Did. Jim is being very sneaky with how he's positioning this J.J. McCarthy deal. You think he's going to take him? I don't think it's that, but I think he's enticing. Because where does he pick? He picks five. Yeah. And four is Arizona, the Cardinals, so they'll probably take Marvin Harrison. So if you're Minnesota and you got Jim Harbaugh telling you how – don't get me wrong. His pro day was really good. His combine was really good. But you got Jim Harbaugh continuing to double down on, hey, he's he, really good. He he's hasn't good. been wrong. And bro. he hasn't been wrong. So now – and he's sitting at five. He's on a hot streak. That's what he said. He said uh, four quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. So the Chargers at five is really like having the number one pick in the draft. Yeah. That's what he said. Also, here's what he had to say about J.J. McCarthy. This from uh, uh, on X, Tracy F. G. S. N. got this video. That, that uh, the workout J.J. had, I've been to a lot of pro day workouts and watch quarterbacks throw. That was the best I've ever seen a uh, quarterback do in a pro day. I mean, not only was feet great and the individual drills and uh, and but then he was started throwing and it was like every every throw was you know, right there. I thought our receivers did a great job too. Uh, 
They all had a great day. But that was the best throwing day I've ever seen. And then, you know, here, your coaches and GMs, you know, come up to me and say, hey, you know, great job with JJ. And, uh, you know, we, like I predicted, once they were around him, I was hearing the stories about how he is on the board, how he is, uh, you know, uh, on the field, the, the little things, the, the intangibles. I mean, it's, it was it was absolutely no surprise whatsoever. But uh, yeah, there was there was there was raving. I mean, I was, it was and it was great to hear, incredible here. I know it's sincere. It was unsolicited. You know, but I mean, I mean, there's numerous, numerous GMs, numerous head coaches. Couldn't say enough good things, and it was. I mean, you could just see it, right? I mean, his his pro day. Right? That's, that's literally. I've never seen a better one. You can't be my friend if you don't support me the way Jim Harbaugh supports Jason McCarthy. Oh McCarty. man, I'm telling you, like that is undeniable so support great. for his quarterback, fearless leader of that one forty four team, national champs, current reigning, defending. Two, two can be true, and two things can be true. He could have seen things out of J.J. that a lot of people weren't privy to because he didn't pass the ball a lot, and he's speaking his mind. He's speaking his truth about how good he thinks J.J. is, and you know he should be taken and you know get his guy drafted. But at the same time, he's selling that position. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, and again, both. all of it can be true. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I wouldn't say you're wrong on that, but at the same time, I think he absolutely loves J.J. McCarthy like he's his eighth kid. Yeah, you know, I mean, JJ McCarthy was the quarterback of a Michigan team that went fifteen and zero, beat Alabama, beat Washington, and won the national championship, and beat Ohio State three times in a row. One loss and in won, two years, and that was to Georgia. You know, I mean, I think he loves that kid. And yeah. if you look at him and you see what other people now, this isn't just Jim Harbaugh. Mike Tannenbaum on Friday said he would take him in the, with a top five pick. Um, and then, of course, all the comments were, well, that's why you're not a general. <laughs> hey. took Mark Sanchez. Word on the but, street but, is he doesn't get by the Vikings. The Vikings will move up wherever they have to move up to take him. Dan the heavy favorites. talking about a top three pick. I mean, these aren't, you know. He could be the second guy off the board. These aren't after, schlep, And it's not going to surprise Williams. anybody in the football in, in the National yeah. Football League. It might surprise you. It might surprise you. But it's not going to surprise anybody. And Neil Rule. And Neil Rule. Certainly won't surprise me. I've been saying this yeah. since October. Hey, yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, J.J. McCarthy is the heavy betting favorite. You know, the Vikings are the one team that have not been around lately. Yeah. You know. They um, and. Don't forget they got the connection with Jim Harbaugh from last year. Absolutely. They have done their due, dil due diligence on J.J. McCarthy. And I do I do not want him to be a Viking because... Um, be thrust into it. I don't want him to be a Viking because I don't want to root against him. Right. With the Lions. You know what I mean? Uh, in the same division. But I think that would be the absolute perfect spot for him. It's a great spot. Perfect spot for him. It You've got two guys... Jordan Addison and and uh, Justin, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. Come on, TJ Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson. Come on, Josh Jacobs. Come on. Yeah, no, definitely. You have your weapons already lined up. Look, at the end of the day, the kid's a winner. The kid has an electric smile. The kid, uh, he bigs his team work up. I mean, he's his teammates up. Also, he's cerebral. Mm -hmm. like, you got to have a guy. That's, you got to have a guy that knows the game and gets better as he goes. Man, and he has the talent. He has the, uh, the the athletic ability as well. You want a guy that can get out the pocket and make some plays. I mean, that's what J.J. McCarthy can do for you. So if I'm the Vikings, Kevin O'Connell, you can work with him. You get him right. You got him weapons already. Could be a match made in heaven. J.J.'s going to be a, a much better pro than people give him credit for. And, Ryan, you've been on uh, that train from the beginning. If I was him, there'd be no other team I'd want to go to than the Minnesota Vikings. I think it's a perfect team for him. Mm -hmm. They're not a – they're always going to be a good team. They're never a schlock team. Mm. They're a great organization, yeah. and they're indoors. You wear some crazy. Kirk man. Cousins for, lived there, loved it. Yeah, I just I think it's a great spot for him. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins. It's funny you bring up Kirk Cousins. That Atlanta thing and Kirk Cousins. I'm starting to like. I, I like the Falcons all of a sudden. Like I think Kirk. I, I think he if he can be healthy, 
I think Kirk Cousins is going to do real good down he there. He will. But here's a funny story. Remember I told you when you're getting drafted, you got to go on the visits? Yep. Minnesota is one of the places I visit. I actually like Minnesota. Yeah. And they, they didn't have their new stadium then. 100%. I, no, they didn't. They, they had the old Metrodome. Metrodome. The Humphrey Dome. Yeah. yeah. The Hubert Humphrey Dome, but the Metrodome. The Hubert Humphrey Metrodome. Yeah. <laughs> the huge, 100%. <laughs> but I like Minnesota, man. I like the colors. It's I, beautiful. I, obviously, I see them twice a year it. because I grew up in Detroit. <laughs> I said, and then uh, Dante Culpepper still was. There. Yeah. So like back in Madden, I was only playing with the Vikings. Cold Pepper the Moss. Like, are you crazy? So I actually wanted. I didn't mind going seven. It's funny. Like you don't mind specific places. Randy Moss. What he was still, like? He had just. Now he was with Oakland. Yeah. It was his first year with Oakland, but still. which is now Las Vegas. But Chris Carter. I didn't mind going to Chicago four. I didn't mind going to Minnesota at seven. I didn't want to go to Cleveland at three. Well, let's talk about but that. Third over yeah, there. let's talk about that because uh, a big to do over the weekend about Deion Sanders, Braylon, talking about how he is going to pull an Eli next year mm -hmm. with Shadur and with Travis Hunter. I want your opinion on that. It was that topic has been run on every major sports show today. We talked about it a little bit on Friday when you weren't here. I want your take on that. Uh, what you have to say about uh, that? We'll do that next, but first. A message from Tom Mazzaway. All right, Premier Pet Supply, hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Family-owned and operated for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations, 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available, curbside delivery if you need it, and nutritionists on site. On call if you have any questions about your pet and their needs. Do not settle for less. Give your pet the best. It's PremierPetSupply.com. I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, it's more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed, and Swiss will make sure that your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. We'll be right back. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss. With Detroit's best DJs, food trucks. And of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod. Perfectly fried clam shrimp platter or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango IC, the ultimate compliment to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off season smells good. Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Awesome it can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax, and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Also, let me tell you about Les Stanford, Chevrolet Cadillac, Buick, and GMC. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? 
you expand and offer more products to more people. That's what Les Stanford did by adding the Buick GMC brands. That store is located just down the road from us in Ferndale on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. And of course, if you're looking for a Chevy or a Cadillac, Les Stanford in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You could find the brand you want, all GM brands, now under one umbrella, lesstanford.com, lesstanford.com. Yep. Together, let's drive. That's right. Uh, so, Braylon. Um, chat is funny, man. Yeah, the chat's great today. <laughs> and it's uh, great every They're day. Having their own conversation. Um, do we have the audio clip of, of uh, Sanders? No. Okay. No, no, no that's talking. that's about don't don't worry about it, Pete. I'll just I'll just uh, paraphrase it for you, uh, Braylon. It's on a podcast, and he says, "Look, there will definitely be an Eli pulled next year. There are some cities we won't go to, and by we, he's talking about Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter." Yes. He said both guys will be top four picks. He said one one of those two will be the number one pick, and the other guy is not getting past four, and they will definitely pull an Eli. Your take on that alone? Um, look, I told you I'm in favor when uh, when when fathers or when agents can dictate a decision like Eli Manning or excuse me, like Archie did for Eli. Look, they didn't want to go to the Chargers, and I understand. It. I look at it from this standpoint. You knew the Chargers organization had been a bad organization for years. Ever since Dan Fouts left, they had been a bad organization. Uh, they had one or two years maybe with Stan Humphreys. They got to the Super Bowl with Nature on Means. But other than that, they're a bad franchise. Nature Matt tells Means. Us all, they're, oh, hey, he's that cold running back number 20. Was bad. Was Nature on Means hey, business. He, mean, yeah. he had a mean haircut, too. Like, he was my like ball head. He was my team. fantasy running back. Yeah. You been playing fantasy that long? Oh, I've been playing since the 90s. Hey, Braylon, oh, if you don't mind, we do have that audio clip. Yeah, I was going to play it. Play, play, play. What do you predict? Shador and Travis going in the draft. Top four. Ooh, that's pretty beautiful. Anywhere from one through four. One of them is going to be one. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. One of them is going to be speaking into existence. And the, the, the latter one would not go behind four. Mm. Now, all this is subjective because I know where I want, kind of want them to go. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget Shallow, okay? Mm -hmm. But I know where I want them to go. So in certain cities that ain't, ain't gonna happen. Gonna okay, you on point? It's gonna be. A, it's not. A, I'm sorry. It's gonna be an Eli. It's I'm gonna, gonna be an Eli. I'm gonna tell you like the first of all. That's a uh, shout out to Wallow and, uh, and Gilly. That's uh, that's 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 for the culture, man. That, that show is dope. But um, Archie Manning did not want Eli to go to the San Diego Chargers. They were a horribly run organization. They were a horrible president. They're horrible GM. <laughs> horrible uh, owners. He if wanted them in New York. Exactly. Plus, you also know where the money is. You know where the money is. So, I mean, if you know these things, like Dion, Dion played in this league. They're organizations that you know. There's being in the know. You know what organization, the Arizona Cardinals, for instance. Yeah, you know where you shouldn't go. You know what organize. The Washington Commanders, uh, Dan Snyder, when he's on, you don't want your son going uh, to play for that team. So, if you have insight and you have knowledge and your, quarter and your son's going to be the number one quarterback, I don't think there's a problem with this, or even the number two quarterback. But Travis Hunter... Uh, he needs to relax with all that. And first of all, Shiloh's not getting drafted. Shiloh, he, <laughs> Shiloh be out there getting cooked and covered and, and covered too. How you get beaten covered too? But with Travis Hunter, he's a he's a Swiss Army knife. He plays both sides of the ball. That's gonna have to stop this year because Deion's gonna wear this kid out. But you can't dictate every pick. You can't dictate uh, uh, where Travis Hunter goes. Where he's a wide out. Oh, we don't want to go here. We want to go there. People aren't seeing it that way. Quarterback, maybe. But not the other position. What teams do you think he says? New ain't England. no way those city, that city. New, New England. England. New, New England. England's won. Boss England's for sure. Won. Boss has got a never, history. Yeah, right. And it, and it still exists. Yeah. You heard LeBron during mm. uh, Oh, that's a fact. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want him going there uh, if I was Dion. Because he's going to know which teams are going to suck and the Patriots are going to be very bad. Who else is going to be very bad that we know? Let's go through the – let's go. do you think it's the Jets he's talking about? No, because Aaron Rodgers is going to play for a couple more years. Who else, who else could he be talking about as a, if you, as a horrible but team? But if you did, and nah, Jets aren't the, Jets won't be picking high enough to get Shadur Sanders. I don't know who's going to be bad next year. I, there's a lot of good teams. Ten, there's a lot of good teams. Well, that's what in the I mean, NFL. But he has he's got Tennessee. two cities in his head already. He's got two cities that he's like they ain't going. There. Carolina. Oh, the Raiders. The Dave Carolina. Tepper. There you go. Dave Tepper. Yeah, Carolina owner. for sure. New I, England. I, Raiders. There you go. Those I two. I wouldn't want to go to Raiders. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go to Raiders. Like, obviously, I would want to in terms of the uniform, as you know, as 
just like you, I think is your favorite. It's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. But they've been another bad mm -hmm. run organization since Mike Davis, the son, has taken over. I mean, look where they got. He just tries to throw money at the problems. Yeah, he and he makes a lot of mistakes. I wouldn't want to go to Raiders either. No. Um, uh, just I've heard every opinion about this today. You know, I, I've heard RG3. I've heard Colin. I've heard all the ESPN guys. I heard all the Fox Sports guys. Some of them for, some of them against. Like, uh, you know, at the time, Peyton Manning is the MVP of the league, and this is the Mannings, the first family of the NFL, and, you know, they can do whatever they want. Then, well, this is Deion Sanders. Deion can do it, but some random dad can't do yeah. it. You're not Deion. I Caleb. Think that's Caleb Williams, everybody dad, got, everybody got cannot pushed. dictate, cannot pull an Eli. Yeah. Because you're not a Manning, and you're not Deion you're not Sanders. A, you're not an NFL Hall of Famer. Right, family. right, right. So... You know, they just didn't want, like, um, you know, uh, what's your dad's name? Sam. They didn't Sam. want Sammy Maz to uh, dictate. Why are you going to throw Sammy Maz under the bus? Just saying he's not an NFL Hall of Famer. Yeah, he is. In my heart, he yeah, Well, is. yeah, he is. Actually, he might be an NFL Hall of Famer, to be honest with he you. He told me the Immaculate Reception was, was a fake <laughs> back then. That's true. I'll never forget when all the all color right. ran out of his face. Well, my... <laughs> My point being, <laughs> my point being, you just can't Take be some, head, you just can't be some yeah, yeah, random parent and uh, <laughs> and dictate where your kid goes. But here's where I'm okay with it for Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders has experience to the point where, not only experience, but a cachet to know that it doesn't matter what number you're picked at. It matters where you actually go. You can be a quarterback and you could, uh, you know, go to a terrible organization like uh, Ch the Chicago Bears, for instance, under Justin Fields. Dude's had, like, what, three different offensive coordinators in three years? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now you feel like there's a little bit of a stability there, but, you know, you're going to go to an organization that's going to fire their head coach next year. Maybe two years from now, you're going to have three offensive coordinators. Um, it just doesn't set you up for success. The Lions were that team four years ago. Absolutely. Um, so I don't mind it coming from Deion Sanders. I, I hear if, you. if you have the ability to do certain things and and uh, go through certain yeah. advantages in life, different look, different people have different advantages. Look, and it, and it's fair to use them. You put yourself in a situation yes. to get those advantages, use them like one hundred percent. Like Deion yeah. Sanders can do just about whatever he wants. One hundred percent. He has friends, he has backing, he has support. You know, when you work hard, you get these things. JJ look, McCarthy's dad can't dictate where JJ's gonna go in the draft. Deion Sanders can dictate cool where Shadour is going. I don't know. JJ's dad is white. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I'm just this joking. guy's got jokes. <laughs> uh, that was a good one. <laughs> That was a good I one. think that's funny. Uh, it's true. I think it's funny. I believe our listening audience you know, is a quick joke. Yeah, in and I, out. Think it's it's a, in and I think out. it's a quick funny. Yeah. Look, I, look, if, if you can't joke, okay? Yeah. If you can't joke, if you can't laugh, if you can't ha have a conversation, I've got no use for you. Yeah, it's not, not you, a good life. You not have life. to be able to laugh about things. Of course. I think. Yeah. That I mean, was funny. Yourself, yourself included. Yes. <laughs> yourself especially. Especially, yeah. Uh, Braylon, I think that was funny. I appreciate it, man. I knew you hey, can, uh, I, can I slip something in here? Sure. Pause. Pause. Uh, <laughs> hey, what? That's wild. Braylon, you weren't here Friday, okay. and we brought this up on Friday, and this has got your name written all over it. All right. Jalen Johnson spoke up Ooh, yeah. about Caleb Williams. Did you see this? Remember break? that one? The DB. And he said, hey, listen, kid, don't bring that Hollywood crap into our locker room. Watch it. Literally, that's what he said. What did I say? That's what you said. Like 100% at the end that's of the day. That's why I wanted you for that one, that story. Some things, they don't change. Like, everything else changes. Like, there may be people, you know, that that um, that have no problem with it, and they don't. You know, they're mm -hmm. not whatever it is. But certain things don't work in a football locker room. Certain types of things in the coats and the dresses and just, like, the nails. Like, it's, it's attention grabbing, and it's not even necessarily about – uh, what does he support, or are you this, or are you that? It's not about that. It's about the attention that it brings to the locker room and the unnecessary attention, the unnecessary. Now you got people trying to answer questions. Now you got me yep. reporters setting players up. He mentioned Hollywood. Don't exactly. bring Hollywood. I here. just Set. can't, uh, Braylon. My take on it that was this. My my take on it was this. I don't think there is. I can't remember a player on a team yeah. 
that had something to say about another player before he was on the team. For instance, nobody on the Washington football team is saying anything about Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Uh, The Minnesota Vikings players are not saying one word about, well, J.J. McCarthy better not come in here if he's taken and take, you know. I think the difference is everyone knows that the Bears are taking Caleb Williams, so it's not a mystery. Like, okay, let me let me say there's a mystery. Let me say it this way: I can't remember a number one player being taken, and a team say something about watch it, watch it. Yeah, don't you be coming in here, do pulling that falling down the stairs uh, (laughs) stuff on me. Coming to America, (laughs) I see you. (laughs) To 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 your point, but I I got I got a response for that in the history of the NFL draft. No quarterback or no number one pick has ever worn a dress or painted that's, his nails or done that. Other, nobody's that's ever what done I'm that. Saying. Yeah, so you're getting a response for the first time you've seen it. Whoa, that's what I'm whoa, saying. Oh no, 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 we don't, we don't do that here. We we come, we practice, we go home, we watch film. Pause. <laughs> true. This Very is Chicago. True. This ain't L.A. <laughs> One of the, um, well, Chicago is a high, is, is a high fashion city as well. Don't get it. Don't get saying, it twisted. Speaking what? of sneak, I got to sneak one more break in. I'm going to okay. do that now. Pause. Uh, but first, it. a message from you, Braylon Edwards, Ooh. and our friends. Is it a message from... Shake Shack! The quarterback challenge. Win two tickets to Detroit home opener. That's right. Two tickets. You see the hat. It's the Detroit Lions, the Kings in the North. Scan the barcode for the Shake Shack challenge. Shake Shack chicken sandwich, by the way, is amazing. We had it two weeks ago. I may or may not have had a couple this past weekend. Grab a shake, <laughs> a crispy crinkle fry. Those get fries. Get into this contest, Those man. fries. Scan the QR code right now or go to wilbersports.com. You can find the contest. I mean, it's the Lions we're talking about. This is a team that's on point, on par for the Super Bowl. When you want to be at the opener, ooh, who are they going to play? San Fran? I don't know. It's going to be fun. Get your uh, get the challenge. BoomSports.com. Scan the QR code. Like a yellow sign out in front of your house that tells the bad guys and me especially one thing. Stay out. Stay out. Stay right. out. That's right. Customized solutions from real experts. 24-7 professional monitoring and technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and by people who have been proven to care. Call 1-800. Stay out. That's 1-800. Stay, Stay out. out. Call them today and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. As we party live from downtown Detroit for the Tigers' home opener. Hey, man, it's April 5th. It's next Friday. We'll broadcast starting at 8 a.m. from Grand Slam Fest. It's the biggest party in Detroit. Over 4,000 party people win your tickets now. Ready, guys? Like the stream right now and comment Grand Slam Fest. Ryan, I'll let Pete pick out the winner today. Uh-oh. Pete oh, will yeah. pick Pete's out the winner out. for Grand Slam to Fest. At least likes. Doesn't mean if it's the first one. Put Grand Slam Fest right now in the chat. We're going to select one winner to come to opening day, April the 5th, at the Detroit Opera House parking lot. That's right next to Comerica Park. Or you can buy your tickets right now at GrandSlamFest.com. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Oh. Jumper. 
tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. Hey, Seafood Fest is back at Big Boy, guys. Catch it while you can. Dive right now into the fish and chips, the new Parmesan-crusted cod, and you know, plenty of other stuff, too. The Big Boy must right now, the new mango iced tea. It goes perfect with the shrimp stir-fry, the ultimate complement to the popcorn shrimp as well. Every day is a fish fry at Big Boy. Don't forget, every Friday night, the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet at your local Big Boy. You can bring Jack Labrador with you as well. JackLabrador.gg or you can click on that QR code. It'll tell you how to play. This is the Champions deck. It's for $20. You get four games. Not only Jack Labrador, which makes rock, paper, scissors that much better. Two new symbols and, of course, a franchise-changing three-point play. JackLabrador.gg. Tell them Woodward Sports sent you. You know what, Maz, um, you know, baseball season's around. Oh. That's when they start watching Major League and all the baseball movies. And has there ever been seen in terms of sports movie, and maybe it has, but whenever the playoffs come around in major league movies, like the, the noise they make as they're going in, do, 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 like it's just great. It man. is. Like, like baseball, you said all the time, Ryan, like it's just, it's just a romantic sport. Something romantic it's about something, it. Baseball, yeah, it's the air tonight, like it's, it's different. Did you guys see that picture? of the on-deck circle at with yes. the Dodger game. What's he talking, by the way? He's supposed to talk today. So here's what it looks like. Sure. I'm not sure if we have it, Pete, but Otani is standing to the left on the on-deck circle. Mookie Betts is to the right. What you see is Otani Betts. You can't Dude, make I, this up. I know. Is, you you is, can't. You can't make it no, up. No, it's they're on the on deck circle. They're one, you know, right okay, next to yeah. each other. Standing next to each other. Otani on the back. Bets on the back. My entire timeline has been filled with Otani videos and like bet. You Betting. see the one gif of the uh, the row of old people hitting the uh, <laughs> oh yeah hitting the what do you call the it? Slot machines. machines. Uh, oh my god! I'm curious to see what he's gonna say. Uh, Not that really, he's gonna say anything. In, in reality, we're, we're listening to the translator. See the oh, one yeah. bookie that came out saying. Uh, it's m m more like twenty-five million, oh, and uh, that Otani was betting on soccer. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So he's got he's got billions of right. dollars. I he know. can do whatever the hell he wants. I know. As long as he's not breaking a rule by betting on his own team right. or betting on baseball. Yeah. That's it. It's just funny that they they've gone this roundabout way to cover it up, though. It's like we know what it is now. <laughs> yeah. So you know you can't hide it anymore. But uh, like the interpreters getting. Uh, He's getting yeah four point five million. Yeah, they're gonna give him that kind I'm of. Gonna they're gonna give like him that kind of cushion. <laughs> sure, man. How much you make? Ninety grand. Sure, I'll I'll let you. Yeah, four and a half million. Yeah, no problem. You got that marker. Marker. Can, can you yeah, imagine what? Sammy Maz being flushed uh, with the immaculate reception? Oh, I'll never forget that day, man. I could I could literally just picture it right now. He's sitting on the right of me in his chair, in his white V-neck T-shirt. I'm sitting on the couch close to the TV, and when that play happened, the Immaculate Reception on December 23rd, 1972, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget the way he looked. And I'm like, Dad, it don't count. It don't count. Frenchie Fuqua, he hit it. You can see. Offense to offense. It don't count. Art McNally. <laughs> How much, how, much how much security we got? Hey, Three yeah, River Stadium? This. this is the referee, the lead referee. How much? How mu oh, there's nobody here? Touchdown. God, I love you. Yo, he, hey, those refs got the, they got the hell out of Dude, Dodge. They ran out of they, Three what? Rivers. Listen, if I could like be reincarnated. You come back as man? I would come back as Tom Massaway. Nah. I just, I just am obsessed with this guy. My freaking Tom memories, man. man. <laughs> Mads, I love I my memories. And his dad. Sitting in Jersey next to his dad. <laughs> two love seats. Two uh, two two chairs. Maybe they kick out. They like, maybe they don't. They got, they like don't. The, they got, they got <laughs> the kick out. 
<laughs> they got the Collins when you first walk in. Like, they listen, the my mother V-nacks. was walking the, in the door. The white v Listen, my mother's walking in the door. It's December 23rd. She's got her hands full of shopping presents for Christmas. Meanwhile, my dad, I don't know what the hell he lost on that game. <laughs> and, and like I said, back. the color ran out of his face. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, take him back. Oh but my we used to go Christmas tree shopping. Uh-huh. My mother would send us this, out. This is like this Me and my uh, sisters would go out with my dad. We'd go to Christmas the Christmas store. We'd go to the shop. We'd go to these these guys. My dad was a hostess cake guy, Wonder Bread guy. So he would he would always <laughs> the, what, how much is the tree this year? Seventy five dollars. What? Seventy five I'll tell you what, let's flip a coin for it. <laughs> if I swear this is truth. It, if I win, it's free. If you win, I'll give you double. And we did that almost every freaking Christmas. No kidding. I swear to God. And how many times did you get it for free? We we mainly got it for free. Really? Yeah. What did he choose? Heads? I, my dad let the other guy always pick. We would flip the coin, boom, and the guy's like, "Go ahead." And you know what my dad would do? The husband. next day he'd show up with hostess cake for the guy. No kidding. Yeah, but we got the tree for free. So he's a most guy. years. That's cool. Yep. What a great. I'll never forget it, man. These, these are things situation. that I just can't. I can't forget. Oh my god! Now I you know it. why I am like I am. Oh my God! Hey, uh, I just want to just uh, during the break, I was just thumbing around uh, and I saw on Instagram Sylvester Stallone put a video out, and it's like him. He says, "What I do after every Rocky," and he's dancing and he's doing ah and all this stuff. And then the 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 post is, "Should we do another one?" And hell that yeah, clearly is in the works. Yeah, he's not going to Instagram. It's already yeah, one hundred percent. Like he absolutely has made up his mind. He's What's doing he gonna do? Rocky. You think? I don't know because you know there was an issue with the Creed franchise now, um, and the Rocky franchise actually. Uh, Sylvester Stallone doesn't own any rights to the Rocky franchise. It all is like um, Robert Chartoff and yeah. Erwin Winkler. Yep. And there was a big, big uh, to do about that. So um, you know when Creed split off. I think Rocky Sylvester Stallone was not in that Creed three. He wasn't because of the dispute with the Chartoff family or Winkler family. I don't remember which one. It's only one right. of them that he's really. So what can he do now? He's already managed. He can't fight anymore. He's sick. He's broken down. Adrian's gone. Paulie's what, what, gone. Paulie's gone. gone. What can he do? Adonis Creed is gone. Yeah. <laughs> can, he, can he work on uh, on on the Russian? Drago. The kid. Drago's kid. Clubber I, Lang. I don't know. Clubber Lang. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in though. Oh, I mean, I'm in. I could, I could watch two hours of Rocky dribbling that ball, walking yeah. up and down the streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> oh yeah, with the, yep. with the gloves on, and that gloves top on. hat. I'm I just, fine with I, it. I just did four of them in this past two weeks. I did another. I did the four of them again. I can't not watch it. I know. And my favorite is still the first. Yeah. To me, it's still the best. It is the best. There's it's no a doubt true, about it. That's the true blue story. You know what I saw the other day? It was Ali against Chuck Webner, which was really Ali against, excuse me, uh, Apollo Creed against Rocky. I forgot Webner got knocked out in the 15th with about 40 seconds to go. He wanted to last the whole go time. Go the distance. And he didn't go the distance. He just missed going the distance. Hey, Pete, who uh, do we have a winner today? We do. I, I sent it to Tom there. Tommy, you want to announce yeah. it? Do you see it? We've got Drew Vogel. Drew Vogel's okay, our chat okay. winner today. What's up, Drew Vogel? Two tickets Settle to Grand Frank. Slam Fest right next to the, to uh, Comerica Park at the Detroit Opera House parking lot. Tigers opening day, April the 5th. Join us. We'll do it all week, day. right? Yep. We'll, yep. Do, it we'll every do every day. We'll do this all week, all every week day, long. all day. And, and the, hey, you know, e- even if you don't win the tickets, we still invite you to come. We'd love for you to come see us, uh, right? Absolutely. Uh, April 5th, we Absolutely. want you all to be From there. From 8 a.m. So. on. Absolutely. Mail. Um, a right. couple of games tonight, guys. Uh, Pistons, uh, they are on the road in New York. We talked about that. They're a 16 and a half point favorite. You will not see uh, a number like that. Yeah. And and probably the Knicks. Probably. <laughs> you know what? You might see it. We don't know who the rest right. of the 10 games right. left are. No doubt. I want to bring up uh, uh, hockey for a second. Please. I want to bring up college hockey. College hockey. Michigan State beat Michigan. On Friday night in overtime, here's, here's how it went. Check this out. Davidson for Lepster. Nico Mueller. Geary. Nice. 
It's all right. Get these bums out of here. Man. Hey, big time, Big Ten champion, Michigan State. They earned it. They have played beautifully all year. Michigan has played good, but not as good as MSU. But guess what? They both go what? for a chance to the Frozen <laughs> the Four. jersey came up. <laughs> Listen, the Frozen Four uh, will be fought for starting on Friday night. Uh, Michigan State gets to play against Western Michigan. U of M draws North Dakota. They're both in the same region. They yeah. can meet again in the final for a chance to go to St. Paul. So what I saw was somebody was pissed because if you look at the bracket, the, a region that Michigan Michigan State and it's somebody else yep. are in another powerhouse school. They are. It's, the, it's North Dakota. Yeah, they're the best in the, in the tournament. Meanwhile, the stadium of the ring they're playing only seats 2,500. 2,500. What are you doing? Are, tickets are over $1,000 <laughs> to fill that arena right what now. What are we doing here? It's the dumbest thing Remember, ever. Remember Michigan was in did. the Frozen Four and the Final Four same year? Fantastic. Yeah. Basketball lost to Villanova, yep. and I think uh, Michigan lost to Notre Dang. Dame. On it starts game. Friday. I love the Frozen Four. I, oh, I, 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 I what really about the wings, it. Maz? Tell me about yep. the wings. Red Wings uh, lost a heartbreaker on Saturday to the hottest team in hockey. one nothing to the Predators. They're in Washington tomorrow. They're in the midst of a five-game road trip. This is it. It's do or die. They got to come home. It's a six-game road trip. They got to come home 500 or they're going to be cooked. We'll they're out that. right now. They're yes. one point you back can't, of the Washington Capitals. You can't get swept in this in this road right. trip. They're out right now, but it goes to show you Dylan Larkin being hurt. Now, whether it should have been that much of a uh, deal or not, it was. You see what happened the first game back. Two goals, win the game. Like Dylan Larkin is the leader in the heart and soul of this team. So It's going to be Detroit or hurt. Washington. Probably that gets that last spot. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, you've got the Islanders. We don't want the great eight in there. Get no. the great eight out of there. Yeah, yeah the Washington OB. or Detroit. I want to see the Red Wings get spot. in there and make some noise and knock off a number one seed. That would be they great. They play Florida, right? Well, they whoever the number the one Rangers, seed is. Yeah, yeah. they go back and That would forth. be fantastic. Right. Can they be this year's Rangers in baseball? We saw what the Rangers did. I don't know. This will be their first try in the, in the playoffs with this type of team. I don't know. Hey, uh, big Just show tomorrow, guys. Calvin Johnson. Ooh, yes. The whole number one. Wow. wow. Show. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Megatron, Johnson. Megatron. Hall of Famer. Tomorrow at 2.15. Joins first us right there. Valley Hall of Top of the show, baby. All right, gang. Great stuff. Uh, Bray, have the honors. You know what time it is. Calvin Johnson, tune in tomorrow. Also, we appreciate Greg Kelser, Voice of the Pistons, for coming on the show today. A lot of fun with him. Uh, great stuff, great show. We appreciate the support. You see Ryan Armani covering up, covering up the yarn because the boy's been working hard. We'll see you guys tomorrow. You tune in. Armani and Edwards with Matt.